think it's a good time to start. Uh, sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for this exciting event on housing and homelessness in California in the wake of COVID-19, hosted by the Berkeley Opportunity Lab. I'm Hillary Hoynes, Professor of Economics and Public Policy at UC Berkeley, and I'm also the director of the Berkeley Opportunity Lab. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Opportunity Lab is a research hub here at Berkeley, at UC Berkeley, and our mission is to build new insights into the causes and consequences of social and economic inequality and to provide policymakers with evidence-based solutions, promoting equity and opportunity for all. Before outlining the schedule for the day, I wanna to start uh, to extend a few thanks. Uh, first of all, um, this event is part of OLAB's initiative on inequality and place, promoting opportunity and growth through place-based policies. And this initiative is and this event uh, is made possible through the generous support of the Smith Richardson Foundation. So we thank our funders uh, greatly. I'd also like to thank Joe Brodus, a program manager at OLAB who has organized the event, as well as the behind the scenes team at SEGA, Berkeley's Center for Effective Global Action who are helping to support it. So thanks to all of you. So now uh, the plan for this afternoon. Uh, we're gonna start with a keynote presentation by Senator, Senator Scott Wiener, who I will introduce in just a minute. And then after his remarks, we're gonna have one panel discussion focused on housing. And the panel will be moderated by Liam Dillon of the LA Times. Liam covers issues of housing affordability and neighborhood change for California and also hosts a popular podcast. We will then turn from housing to homelessness and Professor Carolina Reed of UC Berkeley will provide some framing remarks and then she will moderate the second panel focusing on homelessness. Liam and Carolina will introduce uh, the panelists uh, of each of those two sessions. And to our audience, uh, we welcome questions from the audience for both panels. So feel free to use the Q&A function in Zoom and you can also upvote questions uh, that, are, uh, that are contributed. And the chat is going to be disabled uh, for this event. Our, uh, after our two panels, we'll be aiming to uh, end uh, the sessions at about 4.30. And for those of you who are interested, we are recording the event. Uh, so please, please spread the word uh, to your friends and colleagues who are unable to attend. So now on to our uh, distinguished keynote speaker. I am delighted to have the opportunity to introduce Senator Scott Wiener. Senator Wiener represents San Francisco and Northern San Mateo County for the California State Senate. Senator Le uh, Wiener was elected in 2016 and focuses on housing, transportation, civil rights, criminal justice reform, clean energy, and alleviating poverty. Uh, he chairs the Senate Housing Committee and has authored 42 bills that have been signed into law. And notable for this event today is of course SB 35, a landmark law to streamline housing approvals in cities not meeting their housing goals. So let me welcome you to Berkeley and OLAB and thank you in advance for joining us. Uh, and it is now my pleasure to turn it over to Senator Wiener. Great, thank you uh, so much for having me today. <clears throat> thank you all for uh, for, for being here, and this is definitely an esteemed uh, group of uh, people and speakers you're uh, hearing from. Um, so, you know, I, I think um, as with many aspects of the pandemic, um, COVID has shined a huge light on uh, pre-existing problems, problems that were always with us that some people saw, some people may not have seen, um, some people experienced, some people didn't experience, um, and has made those problems more visible and in many cases worse. And housing is no exception. Um, despite some of the uh, um, spinning that we hear about how COVID means that we don't need to build any housing anymore because everyone's uh, working from home, um, putting aside the fact that that is not going to remain the case, that, that offices will still continue to exist and people will continue to commute, even if not every day. Um, the operative part of that phrase, work from home, is the word home. Uh, we still have the same number of people. Um, and in fact, uh, despite the media um, uh, portrait of everyone leaving California, that's not true. Um, people who have moved in California during the pandemic have largely moved within the state. 
Uh, and in the Bay Area, because everyone loves to dance on San Francisco's grave and the Bay Area's grave, there was this whole narrative that, oh my God, the region is just emptying out. Well, it turns out that the vast majority of people in the Bay Area who have moved uh, have moved to another part of the Bay Area. And even though San Francisco has seen a net out migration during the pandemic, San Francisco has a history of uh, more significant swings in population than the rest of the state. Uh, and uh, as we recover, I am, we're already starting to see it with rents starting to go up again after going down, um, we're gonna see population growth. So the problem is still there in terms of the lack of housing, uh, but COVID has really shined a light on what happens when you don't have enough um, housing with the evictions uh, or the risks of evictions that we're seeing and the need for an eviction moratorium uh, for the fact that even when rents go down, they're still outrageously high. Uh, yes, going down from $3,300 a month to $2,700 a month, um, that, that's great in terms of uh, taking a little bit of the steam off of a crazy rental market. $2,700 a month for a one bedroom is still obscenely high uh, and out of reach for most people. Um, so, and then we've of course have seen um, uh, homes for purchase go up in value even during the recession that we're experiencing in the pandemic. Uh, so COVID has emphasized the prevalence of housing instability um, and the fact that housing, even during a pandemic, is still really expensive. It didn't just become cheap. It got even more expensive in some segments of the market. And so, um, and you know, we, we really have to double down and fix this problem. Um, and when you look at where we are in California, where we are short millions of homes. And the debates that we have about what that number is are some say it's three and a half million, some say it's two and a half million, some say it's two million or it's 1.8 million. Shoot, pick, pick your poison. Either way, it's really, really bad. It's a huge number of homes that we need in the millions. And our housing production is really low. Even before the pandemic, it was barely 100,000. It's, it's not surprisingly gone down. Um, it's nowhere near the 250,000 to 330,000 new homes a year that we used to build back in the 1950s and 1960s um, when we did it the old fashioned way by building housing for people uh, who need it as we would grow as a, as a uh, state. And so we have uh, accumulated this massive, massive deficit by not building enough housing. And uh, too much of the housing that we build, almost half is in uh, wildfire zones. So we're building a lot of sprawl housing, which leads to longer commutes and increased carbon emissions and uh, covering up farmland and building in wildfire zones. So we really, really need to get it together. We've been trying to do that work in the last uh, number of years, and there's a lot more to do. But you have to look at how we got here. We got here because um, about 50 years ago, California decided that it was no longer a priority to have enough housing for everyone who needed it. And so as opposed to Previously, when we just built housing as we grew, we basically stopped building very much housing. Uh, and California uh, did this in a number of ways, erecting all sorts of barriers to building housing, um, restricting, uh, restricting zoning. So it used to be that you could build um, multi-unit apartment buildings in large swaths of California. Well, in the 70s and in the 80s and beyond, it was uh, apartment buildings were banned in the vast majority of the state only single family homes were legal to build to the point where a large majority of the residentially zoned land in California is zoned single family. And there are cities like San Jose where it's something like 80%. Um, and so uh, we create a math problem where you can only build one unit of housing per parcel, um, particularly in job rich and transit rich areas and, and see why that becomes a problem. But that's not all. In addition to effectively you know, banning um, a huge swath of housing, like LA in the 80s, um, uh, down zone and deleted one half, 50% of its own housing capacity. In addition to doing that, we also as a state made it really hard to get housing approved, even if it's within the zoning, even if people come forward and say, I want to build something that fits within your zoning and your rules. Uh, we created the systems through local discretionary um, approval processes, conditional use, CEQA, where it can take three, four, five, ten 10 years to approve housing that completely meets all of the adopted uh, criteria. Uh, and so 
uh, you lay, and then on top of that, <laughs> we decided um, to allow cities to adopt impact fees or exactions uh, on housing that can be extremely high. In the city of San Francisco, um, you have to pay $165,000 on average for every unit of housing that you deliver. Um, it's 65,000 in Oakland. Um, there are some cities that are even higher than San Francisco. So we allowed cities just to impose pretty much whatever they want to impose. So layer upon layer upon layer of, of just making it hard to impossible to build enough housing. So um, in this, the state had some housing laws to try to get cities to allow more housing that had no teeth. Um, and over the last about five, six years, the legislature has stepped in and said, you know what, um, this whole local control, like extreme local control is not working. It's a race to the bottom where cities have very little incentive to build enough housing. Prop, Prop 13 was the other thing we did, uh, which makes it very um, more lucrative for cities to allow commercial development instead of residential. Um, and so uh, cities have a race to the bottom. And, and, and so no wonder we are short millions and millions of homes. So the work we've been doing is to try to un, like peel back that onion, if that's the right uh, phrase, um, and piece by piece. So we have been trying to streamline uh, more housing um, to make it faster to approve housing that's zoned for. Um, done that, a law that I authored, SB 35, there have been some other great streamlining laws as well. There's more work to do, uh, but more and more housing in California is being streamlined. We did it by strengthening the state's um, accessory dwelling unit or ADU or in-law unit law, uh, which had been on the books for 40 years with no enforcement. We now have closed, the, I hope all of the, almost all of the loopholes now. Um, and, and everyone in California, if you own a home or a apartment building, you're allowed to add an ADU and then what, what we call a junior ADU, which is a smaller version. Um, and you're absolutely entitled to do that. The city cannot say no. Um, and uh, that's a very, very good thing. We've strengthened the um, Housing Accountability Act, which I, I refer to as the don't change the rules in the middle of the game law, that if a city has zoned for and set rules up for housing and someone comes forward proposing a project that meets all those requirements, you can't change the rules in the middle of the game and say, well, we know we zoned for 12 units. We're only going to let you build five units. We know we zoned for four stories. We're only going to let you build two stories. Why? Just because, because we don't feel like giving you the full permit. That um, is, you can't do that under the Housing Accountability Act. Um, we have been working to uh, reform zoning in California to say that it's not sustainable from an affordability perspective or a climate perspective to um, allow only single family homes near public transportation and in job rich uh, areas where people can have a shorter commute. Um, and so we tried in a big way with SB 50, a bill that I authored um, to allow small to mid-sized apartment buildings near jobs, near transit. That bill did not uh, pass. It, it did, I think, a lot better than a lot of people expected, but it didn't pass. Um, but um, it has created space for a lot of other bills um, to um, start reforming zoning. And so uh, we have legislation to allow uh, duplexes statewide that are pro ten. Senator Atkins is authoring. I'm authoring legislation to make it easier for cities to upzone up to 10 unit uh, buildings. We have multiple pieces of legislation to facilitate conversion of com underutilized commercial land into residential or mixed use. Um, and so on and so forth. So we're making step-by-step -step progress in these areas. Oh, and I should say that we're, there's some work being done to try to rationalize um, impact fees so they're not as arbitrary as they are today. So we're making progress in a number of these areas. It is not fast enough. We need to go bigger, faster. Um, but you know, the legislative, this is a big, diverse, complex state, and uh, there's a lot of pushes and pulls on housing policy. But the good news is, that in the legislature, the politics have shifted tremendously in the last five years. Uh, and there's a growing number of legislators, more and more from all over the state who deeply get it about the need for more housing and the need to make it easier to build housing. We have more and more housing champions uh, in the legislature. Uh, and um, uh, you know, I, I think we're gonna get there, but again, it's never fast enough because people are hurting today and we're, right before the pandemic and will be after the pandemic. Uh, we wanna make California a place again, where young people and young families and working class people can envision a future for themselves 
in terms of having housing that's appropriate for their needs. Um, we've moved away from that in California over 50 years. It's gonna take us time to get back to that, uh, but it is so important. And I know a lot of us are committed to the fight. So thank you for having me today.